Intersusception is a condition in which a segment of the bowel is invaginated within an immediately adjacent distal portion. The proximal portion is invariably inside the distal portion and the causes of intersusception are idiopathic in primary cases, secondary to infections such as upper respiratory tract infection, gastroenteritis and urinary tract infection. Lead point is Merkel's diverticular, polyp, ectopic pancreas, enterogenesis, appendix, or a tumor. For, it can occur following surgery like intra or retroperitoneal additions or focal bile wall edema acting as the lead point. And these are the main causes of intestinal obstruction postoperatively. The pathophysiology of interception mostly occurrences are acute. And the invaginated segment known as the interception is carried distally by the pelvis which is disordered. The mesenteries and the vessels become involved with the intramural loop and squeezed within the engulfing segment known as the intersusception. Then the pressure which is created by the walls of the intestine pressing together causes a decreased blood flow, irritation and swelling. Venous congestion is a major factor both in the symptomatology and in the characteristic presence of blood in stool. There are types of intersusception. We have iliocolic where the small intestine telescopes into the colon and this is the most common intersusception. The next one is iliocolic where the small intestine telescopes into itself and we have colocolic where the large intestine telescopes into itself. Iliocolic or colocolic interceptions occur less frequently than in the iliocolic interception. Interception has three parts. The inner tube which is the entering part, the middle tube or the returning part, and the outer tube which is the interception. The clinical presentation of interception involves a classic triad of pain which is normally held each other sudden screams with pain and draws its legs up and may adopt a squatting position. Vomiting and bleeding per rectum, which is in 85% of cases. Early symptoms include nausea, vomiting, pulling legs to the chest area, and intermittent moderate to severe cramping of the abdomen. Later signs include rectal bleeding, often with red cure and jerry stool, where is the stool which is mixed with blood and mucus and lethargy. In children or those too young to communicate their symptoms, they may cry, draw their knees up to the chest or experience dizziness with paroxysms of pain. Fever is not a symptom of interception, however, interception can cause a lobe of bile to become necrotic. This leads to perforation and sepsis, which causes fever. In some patients, interception is painless, but the infant may appear pale, diaphoretic or lethargic. Eventually, the signs of intestinal obstructions develop. The physical findings in interception include a mass where, during abdominal examination which is saucy shaped and curved due to mesenteric attachment, hard inconsistency and located in the right hypochondrium and stretches across the midline. This mass is tender and feels empty. That's the dance sign. We have bloodstained mucus during digital electro examination and the apex may be felt. Diagnosis and investigations done include a complete blood count, urea, electrolytes and creatinine levels, plain abdominal x-ray which shows signs of intestine obstruction such as RIF, soft tissues, target sign, absence of the sickle gas and the stool, also the meniscus sign and loss of visualization of the tip of the liver with paucity of the bile gas. Ultrasound shows a transverse hypochoic outer rim and central echoic core that is the donor sign, also can show a longitudinal hyperechoic center sandwich or pseudo kidney sign. The accuracy of ultrasound is 100%. We can also use contrast studies like barium enema and the treatment of interception includes supportive management using gastrointestinal tract drainage with a nasal gastric tube decompression, intravenous fluids and electrolyte replacement using crystalloids and the maintenance rule is 4 to 2 to 1 per hour. Definitive management aims to relieve obstruction.
and this includes barium enema therapy, air enema therapy, which is an excellent with less x-ray exposure than in the barium enema and is easy and quick clean technique. We can also use ultrasound guided saline enema therapy where there is no x-ray exposure, therefore the procedure time is not limited. This procedure has excellent results and visualization of all components of the interception and is easier to recognize the lead points and residual interceptions. We also have surgical means of reduction. The complications which may arise due to interception include perforation of acilias, which is a serious complication due to the risk of infection. If not treated, interception is always followed in infants and young children in two to five days. Others include rheumatoid fever, pneumonia, sepsis, anastomotic breakdown, and recurrences. The outcome is good with early treatment, and there is a risk of condition will come back in 3% after surgical reduction and up to 11% in non-operative reduction.